The United States and Russia hold over 90% of the world's nuclear weapons. A strategic nuclear missile launched from the United States can hit Russia in about 30 minutes. Russian missiles can go just as far, just as fast. Efforts between the two countries to negotiate limits on these kinds of weapons go back to the end of the Cold War. Steve Pfeiffer is with the Brookings Institution. They began in the late 1960s and produced the first strategic arms limitation treaty back in 1972 that was signed by uh, President Nixon and, and General Secretary Brezhnev. This SALT-1 agreement, the Strategic Arms Limitation Talks, froze the number of strategic ballistic missile launchers on both sides at existing levels. In 1987, Mikhail Gorbachev was leading the Soviet Union and Ronald Reagan was President of the United States. When Ronald Reagan became President, he put the emphasis not just on limiting nuclear arms, but actually beginning the reductions. Reagan and Gorbachev signed the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty in 1987, eliminating an entire class of intermediate range nuclear missiles. Just as importantly, the treaty allowed each side to inspect the other's facilities. Make sure either side wasn't cheating. Dovii no provii. That is a proverb that Russia that says, trust, but verify. And also under uh, President Reagan, and this is working with uh, Gorbachev on the uh, Soviet side, they began the negotiations on the strategic arms reductions talks, the START talks. Those produced uh, the START-1 treaty that was signed back in 1991. START-1, signed by President George Herbert Walker Bush and Gorbachev, resulted in the removal of about 80% of all strategic nuclear weapons then in existence. START-1 expired in December of last year. In April of this year, the new START agreement was signed by Presidents Barack Obama and Dmitry Medvedev. The United States and Russia have agreed to the most comprehensive arms control agreement in nearly two decades. Both countries will reduce their supplies of long-range nuclear weapons by roughly a third, from 2,200 to 1,550 each. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. We hope our, our friends in the Senate will bring this up, pass this treaty. Not so fast, say Republican leaders in the U.S. Congress. They say this agreement could threaten U.S. plans for a missile defense system based in Europe. Senator Saxby Chambliss said as much at a Senate hearing in Washington. The issue of missile defense may be more important than any agreement that the U.S. and Russia enter into regarding nuclear weapons. Some Republicans say the United States sacrificed a missile defense system in a secret side agreement to the New START Treaty. Brian Darling is with the Heritage Foundation. Outside of the treaty, there was a side agreement that was cut between the Russians and the United States. The United States would agree to not uh, promote missile defense, not build any new missile defense facilities in Eastern Europe in agreement for the Russians signing onto the treaty because they don't want missile, they don't want the United States to deploy missile defense. Obama administration officials say there is no side agreement and nothing in the treaty would prevent the U.S. from pursuing a missile defense system. But some Republicans remain skeptical. Conservatives are deeply concerned about it, and they have not been provided the negotiating record to see if that deal was cut. Republicans in Congress may not like this treaty, but there are a whole lot of prominent Republicans outside of Washington that feel differently. Every uh, former Republican Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, or National Security Advisor who's talked about New START Treaty has endorsed it. The New START Treaty has to get through the U.S. Senate by a two-thirds majority vote. That means 67 senators have to vote yes. For the United States, getting rid of some nuclear weapons would seem like a sure thing. But it isn't. Why? Now you know.